Hello and welcome to another episode of Dave Trippin. This is Couch Therapy, so we're doing a sort of a cultural slash Q&A discussion of uh, all things in Japan. And recently I had a bunch of emails piling up with a very, very similar question, which is that people are now confident to come over and teach English in Japan, but they're wondering what company is it that they should work for because you've got all these different ones that you can choose from. You've got Eon, you've got Interact, you've got Jet, which is more of a, a government program. And it's hard to decide. Uh, I've talked recently about having uh, too many options is actually more of a, a deterrent to us doing well overall because we don't know how to choose and uh, we get hung up on the decision. But here I am to put your mind at ease. So uh, first, I'll talk about basically, to cut right to the point for those who crave that like very material understanding of things, uh, to the one that I would recommend uh, that I have seen as a result of sifting through, <clears throat> excuse me, sifting through like the different options uh, that are available from the large dispatch companies. And that one would be Altia. So there it is, straight out of the gates. You don't need to worry that I'm gonna go on a, some philosophical ramble here yet. Uh, I would suggest Altia out of all the ones that you can choose because Altia from what I've seen is uh, it has the highest starting average wage uh, compared to all these other dispatch companies for a number of different reasons. Um, Jet is an entirely different uh, entity unto itself and I want to discuss that differently. Don't consider Jet as a part of these dispatch companies because it's associated with the, uh, the government program. But let me talk about this one first. So. I recommend Altia. I said I was talking about the pay bracket that you start with, but there's a couple of other things to consider. So I've mentioned this in other videos that when you get hired at a dispatch company, it's all about positioning their values to you, right? And so one of the things that they say to you on average is that they're going to pay you between 230 and 250,000 yen per month when you come over. So that seems, well, by no stretch of the imagination. This isn't an amazing amount of money, but for some people, and maybe a lower minimum wage job, that's actually kind of a step up already, so it seems pretty good. But then what they're not telling you until you're kind of over and you're signing contracts, or if you've dug a little deeper, is that a number of those months that you're going to work for a company like, say, Interact for, are prorated which is a blessing and a curse. They're kind of relying on you being like a lazy, lazy college student that would enjoy having tons of time off at uh, summer and winter, but they prorate your pay, so in that time they're paying you usually somewhere between like 60% to 50% of what your wage would normally be, and there's other points in the year that this occurs. And so that quote that they said initially of 230 to 250,000, is not actually totally accurate because you have about four months of the year where your pay is prorated and so if you then average that across all the months it's much lower. Where Altia is not done in this way. They actually pay you the full amount that they say that they're going to pay you for the duration of your contract, which is quite useful I would think and actually represents closer to what they say that they're going to pay you. Uh, another reason that I think that Altia is a good company, company to go with is because they're the majority of the placements that they have to offer are in the Kanto region. Uh, so that's going to be in and around Tokyo basically. You can go a little north, you can go a little bit south. Uh, but it's still kind of that general area around there. And if it is your interest to explore Japan, it certainly helps you to be in a more central region where you can imagine if you were placed somewhere up in the far north of Japan, say you're in the littlest town up in Hokkaido, then getting down to see the rest of the country becomes a lot more of a challenge. Whereas if you live in a Kanto, Kanto region area, then you could conceivably on the weekend hop on a bus, go on a weekend trip. You could be up to Nikko to check out Tokugawa Ieyasu's tomb. You could be going down south to Yokohama and seeing, you know, the beautiful like uh, harbor and walkways that they have there. Any, anyways, not to go in, it's not, this is not a tour video, but obviously being situated in the Kanto region uh, is very, very, very useful. And so that's where the majority of their placements are. So. As a general guide, if you want one that I think is far better than the others, that's basically it. You get a little bit higher pay, um, and then you're going to get the added benefit of if you would like to travel, that you'll be in this area. Um, <clears throat> now, to go on to talk about, I said wouldn't talk about JET, so let's talk about JET a little bit. JET is an amazing program, uh, and JET 
unquestionably has the highest compared to all these dispatch companies. They're dispatch, they're like the middlemen companies as opposed to the government program which is Jet. Jet has the full pay um, or much larger. It's, it's on average I would say it's 280,000 and not only that, Jet is going to subsidize your healthcare which is really really handy. Very very useful because healthcare ends up costing a fair bit of money. Now, the problem with Jet, though, is that it is so well known that it is prohibitively difficult to get into uh, because they have so many people applying that their requirements it borderlines on ridiculous, where I know people that have had, are competing for positions within Jet with master's degrees and don't get it, where there are so many jobs in Japan that are actually, in fact, better than Jet, but lesser known. Uh, but that don't have that same competition. So of course with your master's degree you can get into there or you could teach at a university. You know, there's uh, there's lots of options. So I always tell people to go for JET, of course, but then don't be discouraged at all if you don't get it because that's the vast majority of people given the insane co uh, competitiveness to get into the program. Also, where you might be concerned and thinking to yourself, well, you just mentioned that the health benefits are a big important thing to consider getting into JET. Something to remember is that when you first arrive, because you have no monetary history, because you haven't been making money in the country, that something like your health care costs or pension uh, or income tax, all these taxes when you first enter are very, very low. And so having that subsidy in your initial first year isn't so important. So where that seems like a, lar a large loss to begin with, it's not so bad. It's not so bad when you get into these other companies. Um, now talking, I've told you, like you can go with the other ones. Eon, say you got set, shut down by um, Altia. Here's, here's the best thing in the world, that if you did get shut down by Jet, if you then go for my recommendation and you get shut down, Here's the thing to remember about choosing one of these companies if you're thinking anywhere beyond a first year, which I think people get locked into a very rigid way of thinking when they think of what is the best company or what is a career that I'll have when I'm here, when a career, even if you stay in one place, is never usually the same job. And I would keep that spirit in mind when you're coming over to Japan to teach, when you think, never ever think that that first company that you get into is probably the one that you're going to stay at use these companies, and I've said this before in other videos, to be a foothold to get into something else. And so if you're concerned when you first, first arrived that you haven't found the ideal job position, don't sweat it. Be thinking about the next position that you could get, be thinking about whether you want to evolve your education. This is, I'm talking now to people who want to stay here for a little bit longer, but don't so narrowly define your career as whatever company it is that you're in. In an ideal world, sure, or for some people at least, I don't desire to always stay in the same company, but for some they want to stay in the same company and they want to progress up that ladder. I think a career can be found in Japan by moving from a number of different positions, even if you stay accumulating experience uh, in one. I rarely, in fact, I think it's almost impossible to say that work experience is wasted here if you're looking to do something in the future. Be that that you have that experience on your resume, so for when you go for the next international school with a much better wage that you do much better, or that if you were interested in a master's program that requires you to have teaching experience, you're accumulating that in the shittiest company that you got into because it was the only one that you got into. So definitely don't be thinking of this first one that you get into as a final step in any way, and it absolutely has its use. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, I wasn't gonna get all philosophical. There's one that I would recommend, but don't get hung up on that first one that you choose really mattering in the long term or really counting against you in any way. It's going to help you in some way or another. So there's my hard and fast recommendation and something to consider for the longer term path when you're here uh, if you're going to do something else. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. Thanks for the awesome support on the last couple of videos. The, uh, the, the hike in Kyoto, that was kind of like a cool narrative experiment I was doing with something more cinematic but narrative. 
a little free form, and then the awesome, like I've been getting some great inspirations fr from some amazing channels for some more dynamic editing. Uh, for the most recent video, that was a wonderful response, and everyone has been showing so much love in the comments section. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it always, you know, spurs me forward to like want to get more creative. I'm doing tons of tutorials now. I got some cool stuff cooking up. Anyways, that's a random little rant. Um, thanks so much for everybody checking this out. Please do like, subscribe, and share. Please do follow me on all the social media down uh, below that I would have flashed on the screen. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next video. That's gonna be Wednesday. It'll be a Q&A. Write me if you wanna get your questions answered or get a hold of me in all the social media that I've provided. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.